What's up guys, Justin Russell with RussellMarineProducts.com. On today's video, we're gonna show you how to the proper ways to respray metal flake to fix a repair on your boat. The first step before even we get started doing this, which is a very critical step, is we've got this boat covered with plastic. Now, when it comes to spraying metal flake or the poly flake, or also known as the glitter, this stuff can really go everywhere. So it's really important to get the whole entire boat covered with the exception of the areas that we're looking to spray. Now, as you can see on this boat, we've got a haze right here. So we're gonna be respraying the black metal flake. Now, a lot of people will see this color here and they'll say, oh, it's a solid black with just a little bit of silver metal flake. It's actually black metal flake with some silver flake mixed into it. So we actually have to respray this. Now, this boat here has red metal flake, we've got a black metal flake, and we have two silver pinstripes on the bottom and on the top here. The important thing for us to remember is we're only spraying the black, so we don't want to get anything down here. But as far as our prep work goes, and again, this is a very important step on the prep. We want to make sure this area is extremely clean, but the very first step that we have to do is we have to roughly sand the area that we're going to respray. The important thing to remember with metal flake is we actually have an area of metal flake that we have to spray, which will be about right here. Then we have an area of clear that we have to spray over that, which will go out much further. So metal flake repair jobs are a lot more tedious than solid color um, gel coat repairs. So we're gonna start by just roughing up this, this area here. We're not gonna get into the red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually run a tape line to the silver where the silver meets the red down here. And I've already run a tape line. There's red metal flake under here where the red meets the silver metal flake up here. And the reason why I did that is I will run a hard tape line where the black meets the silver on the top and bottom because that's where we're gonna be spraying our black metal flake. We'll then pull the masking tape back and we'll actually clear where the red meets the silver on the top and where the red meets the silver on the bottom and we'll fan our edges out and blend in back here on the black on the front and the back. So you really kind of have to think about how you're doing this repair from the very beginning to understand where your tape lines need to be and also where you need to actually rough up your current gel coat to be able to make sure you get a good adhesion both chemically and physically. So I'm gonna take, I've got 400 grit sandpaper here. Um, if I was starting with a solid gel coat color, I'd probably use in 320 or even 220, sometimes even 180. But uh, for this, since it's a lot more tedious, all I'm looking to do is rough up the surface to eliminate any shiny areas. So I'm just gonna take this 400 and go back and forth. Now that we got this area roughed up, I'm gonna run a tape line. We've got our red where it meets the silver and I'm gonna run a tape to where the red meets the silver, leaving the silver exposed. Now the important thing to remember, that's where we're gonna to clear to. So we'll do the black metal flake to where the black metal flake makes the silver and then I'll, I'll actually clear after everything is pulled all the way down to where the red and the silver metal flake meet. So. We're on a tape line right there, and this is very critical that you get this perfect. Same thing up top. We're gonna run our tape lines on the top where the red meets the silver metal flake. Again, that's where we're going to clear to. All right, now that that's taped off, now I got to come back in and actually rough up where this black and silver meet, again, using 400 grit sandpaper.
One of the very last things that we need to do before we actually start masking this and actually getting ready to spray the metal flake is we need to take acetone to this and get all our dust off. If you don't do this, it will get stuck under the clear and you'll be able to see it once you spray your clear gel coat over this. So we're gonna actually wipe this down a couple different times. Make sure we get this really good and clean because that's the last thing we wanna do is get to the very final steps and have some dust, dirt, sanding particles and stuff underneath our clear gel coat. Because once you get it in there, you can't get it out and you don't want it to turn hazy on you or look different than what it should be. You want it to be nice and beautiful. It's important to wipe the stuff all around it also because once you start spraying, you got air going everywhere. You'd be surprised where dust comes out of and lands in your, your gel coat or your metal flake. All right, now that that's good and clean, we can actually start taping the areas that we're gonna spray. Now, the important thing to remember on this is we have to work backwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tape this and I'm gonna back tape it back. And what I'm actually looking to do is this is where I'm gonna bring my clear out to. Now, you don't have to go all the way to the edge, but since we can't have anything shiny exposed, I'm gonna cover up all this stuff back here so we don't get any metal flake or clear gel coat on it once we go to start spraying. And then we'll do the same thing on the front. Now my front, I'll bring my clear line to here. So see how far away I am? I'm gonna metal flake this and my clear is gonna come further out. That's so when we blend, we won't have a risk of sanding through and silvering all this. Now, there is some silver metal flake in there, so if you do happen to slightly sand through, it's not gonna be as noticeable as it would be on like a red metal flake or blue metal flake. So, okay, since our clearing out to here and we're running our metal flake to right here, what I'm gonna end up doing next is I'm gonna fill or cover with tape that silver metal flake line on the top and on the bottom, because we don't want our black metal flake getting on it. And then again, this is a very, very important process of getting this nailed correctly. This is very time consuming. So make sure you get your tape line perfectly, your edge, a hard edge, right on the black metal flake where it meets the silver. That way your tape lines will be straight. Same thing on the top. All right, now we've got our silver metal flake covered on top and bottom. We know where we're gonna be spraying our back black metal flake, which is gonna be right in this area here. So we're gonna cover this damaged area, and that's where we're gonna fan out our black to. So now that we know that, again, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna back tape my edges here. Now notice I didn't go right up to the area that we're looking to spray with black. I wanna be able to fan this in and out so it lays naturally. I don't want a hard line right here. I want this to lay up and look natural so that way you won't see a defined metal flake line after we pull this tape back before we spray our clear. So this is all covered. Again, I'm gonna run a back tape line, pull it backwards, and I'm gonna cover this up back here. Again, I don't want metal flake over here because that's where our clear is gonna go. If you would put metal flake back here and then clear it, when you go to sand it smooth, so you can hide your blend lines, you would actually be sanding on your metal flake and again, turning it silver, which is a bad thing, so. 
All right, again, this is the area I'm gonna focus on spraying the metal flake, and I'm gonna start here in the middle and work our way out. Once the metal flake is sprayed to the consistency that I like, we'll pull these tapes back to here, and then we'll come back and lay our clear out. Now, when we go to lay the clear, I'll pull this tape and this tape, again, exposing that silver metal flake, and then we'll clear over that whole section. If you would just clear right over where the black is, again, you're gonna have an edge that you're gonna be able to not only feel, but be able to see as well. So next we'll get to mixing the metal flake up and actually get to spraying it. All right guys, one of the first things I wanna go over before we actually get to mixing our metal flake and our clear gel coat is the gun that I'm gonna use. Now, this is a gravity feed gun, which it's actually better to use the siphon feed gun, um, but for our small application that we're doing, this will actually be fine. This is just a 3M uh, gravity feed gun, and the cool thing about it is it's disposable tips, and you gotta use a very large tip to be able to spray this poly flake or metal flake mist. This one here happens to be a 1.8. I actually prefer a 2.0, but again, for the color that we're spraying, this will be just fine. Um, a big thing that I do like to recommend using for the guys, that, especially your do-it-yourselfers, go to Harbor Freight, get their $30 siphon feed gun. It comes with a 2.0 tip. I think they call it a primer gun. It's perfect for spraying metal flake. I don't really like it for spraying the clears necessarily, but uh, for the metal flake, it works out really, really well. So what I've got here is I've got just some very raw clear gel coat, and this is from the Ranger Boat factory. We're spraying a Ranger bass boat. And more importantly, I've got the exact color metal flake, again, from Ranger Boat, so I ordered this from there. So first to start with, I'm going to pour some clear gel coat in my liner. And you thin gel coat with styrene. And you can get this from US Composites. I get this actually from one of my local distributors. And use styrene to thin it. Now on your normal solid color gel coats, you don't wanna use more than about 10 to 15% styrene. And for this clear gel coat, because we're mixing it with metal flake, we've gotta add a lot of flake to this to be able to get our coverage correctly without being too thick. So you can add a lot more styrene to this since we're not looking for a color style base since we're spraying metal flake. Now, once we go to spraying our clear, on the other hand, we won't wanna add more than 10% styrene in it. It can affect the color a little bit, especially on the solid colors. So I've got that where it just runs down consistently. It's still pretty thick. We'll end up thinning that down some more, but now we're gonna start adding the metal flake. There's not a real defined pattern of how much metal flake to clear coat to add. Honestly, I hate to tell you all this, I've been doing it so long that I just end up eyeballing it. As you can see, it's kind of thick like mud. It still flows, but when I'm looking here on my stir stick, I can see it pulls down very easily and has a lot of voids, so we still need to add some metal flake to that. And I'm looking for this to kind of be a thick mud or thick soup style base. There we go, now it's really starting to chunk up. So now I'm adding a little bit more styrene to that. I'll get a little closer so you guys can actually see what it looks like here. Still showing a little bit of wood on there when it sags down, so I'll add just a touch more metal flake to that to thicken it up. And I know I'm mixing up a lot for the repair area, but what I'm looking to do is I don't want to run loose or run low when I'm actually spraying. And it's actually better to have way more in your gun because it'll come out as a much more natural appearance when it actually sprays and it'll lay up a lot flatter. If you don't have a lot in there with the cup trying to suck down to be able to spray correctly, it kind of gets a little funky and can affect how your, your flake will actually lay because you want to get an even layer of flake where it lays flat completely. Now that we have that mixed up, we need to add our Bondo Liquid Hardener, also known as MEKP. It is the hardener for gel coats. So this you wanna add in at roughly 2%. Now, some guys get really, really precise at counting the droplets and stuff like that. Again, I'm eyeballing it to where it looks comfortable for me. 
The key to this is mix it up extremely well. So you wanna stir this for a long period of time before you actually go and get this thing sprayed. If you don't, it'll never set up. You may not get the hardener mixing correctly. And again, it's gonna affect how A, it looks, and B, how the outcome is. A lot of times, if you don't get it mixed in properly and you start to lay your clear up on it, you'll actually get a sag internally. And then your clear coat sets up. And then you can still see the area that you're trying to repair. So then you have to sand it down and reshoot it again. So you wanna make sure you get that mixed very, very well, very, very consistent. And the next thing is we'll get this all put together, grab our air hose and go get a sprayed. Okay, now that we have our clear gel coat and our metal flake mixed with it, we're gonna start spraying. I'm gonna start on the area where it's closest to the fading and work out from there. I'm not gonna go all the way to the tape edges, again, because I want our clear to go further out than that. And you don't want a, a, a hard defined line where you stop your metal flake because it won't appear correctly aesthetically once you have the clear on there. So we'll go ahead and start spraying. Now that we have the tape pulled, once this area actually kicks and catalyzes over, we'll be ready to spray our clear. And as you can see, with the tape being pulled, I've exposed the two pinstripes, which is that silver color pinstriping on the top and the bottom. So we will clear over all this to help hide our blends and the transition from the black metal flake to the silver on both the top and bottom. And on the clear, we're not gonna go out all the way to the edges of it, but again, we're gonna get close and that'll help even it out and hide our blend lines from when we have to wet sand and polish this. All right, now that we have our metal flake sprayed, we're actually ready to do our first layer of clear. And when I say clear, I mean clear gel coat with that. So what I've got is a Preval cartridge sprayer. Um, I get them here at uh, O'Reilly's Auto Parts, um, Ace Hardware carries them, and so does Walmart. You can use a gun with a tip. I'd recommend a smaller tip with spraying the clear gel coat. But uh, I use a lot of these just for doing spot blends on solid color stuff. It works good for clear. Now, you have to be careful with spraying the clear. Our metal flake is already set up and catalyzed. But if it's not and you spray too heavy a layer and you get a sag in it, it does become more difficult to have to sand that out. So this, unfortunately, the only way you can do this is you cannot use acetone to thin down the clear at all. We're going to do the exact same thing we did with our metal flake. Going to put some clear in there. We'll use the styrene to actually thin it. You don't really want to use much more than 10 to 15% styrene. That's what they say anyway. And uh, we'll shake that up, get that thinned out, and then we'll add our liquid hardener to it. And then we'll actually go back on the boat and spray our first layer clear. All right, guys, we've got our metal flake that is now catalyzed or cured or kicked, whatever you want to call it. I say kicked. We're getting ready to spray our first layer of clear on here. Now, regardless of what it looks like in here, again, we just thinned it with styrene and we added our liquid hardener to it, just like we did with the metal flake. I'll start a little bit further past the metal flake and go back and forth on each side. And I'll actually on each sweep come a little bit further out, kind of dusting towards the edge of where our tape is. Now, remember, I don't want to go all the way over to the tape line because I don't want to create a hard defined line that we have to wet sand out. This will make it a lot easier for us for the blending or the wet sanding of the edges once we get uh, completely done with all our layers. Now, the first two layers go on without any wax additive. The last layer, you need to add a 10% at most a wax additive layer within that. And once you make the sweeping final pass with your wax additive, do not bury it in there. Let it come to the surface and let it start to kick. This is the area when I first started doing fiberglass that I learned I just had to walk away. I'd actually leave the shop, go to the house for a couple hours and then come back. Otherwise, I'd want to mess with it and I'd start touching it, imprinting it, fingerprinting it and messing it up. So we'll just start with the very first layer here. Again, I'm just going to start kind of at the edge of the repair of the metal flake area and work further out from there. As you can see, that rough texture of that metal flake we sprayed is now smooth, which is exactly what you're looking for. And there's layer number one. Layer number two going on. Again, working further and further out towards the end tape. You 
You can see where the duller edges are now shiny. That's exactly what we're looking for. And then our final layer, we'll add our wax additive to that, which will allow it to fully cure. All right, guys, we got our first two layers of clear on, and the final layer of clear has our wax additive in it. You can use between 2 to 10% more towards the error of two to five percent it's a little cold this time of year for us now so we've got a little bit more probably more on the air side around 10 percent wax additive we'll do our final layer of clear with our wax and then we'll just leave to let this cure and then the last step to do would just be a wet sand and polish so we'll start our final layer All right, guys, that's our final layer. Now we'll let this catalyze and then just final steps for it to get this thing beautiful again is just to wet sand and polish the clear area out and then this boat will be done. Be sure to check our other videos out. We're gonna have a lot more videos for fiberglass repair, especially when it comes to spraying gel coat, um, the proper ways to re-fiberglass structure reinforce some areas. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on how to um, spray metal flake or poly flake and clear gel coat on top of it to make your boat look beautiful again.